Hello everybody, this is Bronislava. I have a blog, Handmade Rukodelky, with lots of patterns. So if you want, click below. There is a link. Some of you probably remember when I was making this blouse. Uh, there is a video. I will go and post a link as well. And so in today's video, I am using the same yarn because I had left, actually I bought four balls and I still had two balls uh, left and some. And I granted someone actually a wish to do a dress for American Girl doll. And this is what I have done. In today's video, we actually are going to be working only on uh, the dress up to the lacy pattern, okay? That's the that's today's uh, video. And in the next video, I will, will, we will have two videos. I will go and show you the stitch pattern, how to do this stitch pattern and how to finish the dress. But if you don't want to do the stitch pattern, you just could go and uh, uh, knit all the way down and just finish it as just very simple, plain without lacy pattern dress, okay? And uh, so that's what we will do today. So I need to cast on actually on 58 stitches per my calculations. If you would like to go and learn how to make, uh, how to calculate your raglan stitches, I do have a video for that as well. Okay. I have 58 stitches over here and I will knit f at least four rows, four or five rows of knit and purl stitches. Okay, so just knit and purl ribbing back and forth and I will do like I said at least four rows probably five rows I will see how many I need okay so just knit and purl Okay, let me go and show it to you in English style as well. So knit and purl. Okay. It just comes exactly the same way like if, you know, like if I go and do it uh, in uh, continental style, all right? So uh, you just use your technique and do knit and purl stitches. Okay, this is my third row. Okay, this is my third row. And I'm going to go and make in my third row a, a button. So I am not going to knit these. I'm going to go and do knit and purl, knit, now I'm not gonna knit this right now, but I will do yarn over. I'm gonna go and make yarn over button. We're gonna go and have a small button there, okay? And now I'm supposed to purl and knit, but we need to, because we added one stitch, which is going to go and make a hole there, okay? So we need to go and knit two together because our second stitch is knit so we will knit two together let me go and stretch it a little bit here and we will knit two together okay and this way we we are we added one and took one okay and now we need to purl so knit and purl now I'm going to just continue knit and purl stitches all the way to the end. So this is my fourth row. I will knit my yarn over and purl and co just continue knit and purl, okay? 
and here you can go and see that I have a small small hole for a small uh, button so I have five rows of ribbing all right and we need to put markers in there now I will have edge here edge here and then we need also markers for our raglan I will do my uh, my edge here of with four stitches which is knit purl knit purl now we will put one marker in so we have four stitches and I need 13 for first half of my back okay so I need to knit uh, nine stitches one nine we're going to go and put marker now we need five stitches for first sleeve one two three four five marker so these are our raglan markers and this is our edge marker okay now we need to go and knit 22 row uh, 22 stitches not rows 22 stitches for front one two three in 21 and 22 all right now we are going to go and put another marker five stitches for another sleeve marker nine stitches marker and this is our edge marker because we do already have two markers for our raglan just like over here okay this is raglan 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 edge edge and now we need to go and continue our edge knit and purl knit and purl knit and purl now we are going to go and return we will go and do our knit and purl edges over here knit and purl and in between the edge markers all the way on the ends those markers between those we will do purl stitches okay and in the next row, we are going to be uh, increasing. So knit and purl, knit and purl. And now purl all the way to the next last, next last stitch, I mean marker, okay? All right, so I put it to my last marker, okay, and I will do knit and purl edge, knit and purl. Okay, so that was row six and seven. In row eight, again, we will start with our edge, knit and purl, knit and purl knit and purl now we will knit all the way to our stitch before the marker so we will be basically basically increasing in two stitches right here okay 
uh, before marker and after marker. Always before marker and after marker again. And again over here, before marker, after marker, and over here before marker and after marker, okay? And this, this we, not, we don't increase in here. This is just to rem a reminder for our edge, okay? So, we are going to go and knit all the way to that first marker to the uh, uh, stitch right before the marker. Okay, so we have that stitch. And what we will do is we will increase right below that stitch. And then we will knit the stitch. So we increased by one stitch, okay? We are going to go and move the marker we will knit the stitch first and then increase below it, okay? So we always want to increase before the stitch over here on this, this side of the stitch. And over here, we knit the stitch, knit the stitch after the marker and then increase by knitting below this stitch okay and we are going to go and knit again to our next marker uh, which means next stitch before the marker we will knit below it then we will knit the stitch then we will knit the stitch and we will knit below it, okay? You need to knit below the stitch before you knitted it. So that means one, two, third on this side, okay? And I will continue with these two the same way, okay? So here I am again. So I will knit below that stitch. You see, right now, it's only second, one and two, right? Second stitch from the needle. But once you're finished with this, and once you go and knit this one, then it really is the third stitch, okay? I just want to let you, let me go and show it to you. So we have this stitch, then we have this stitch and we are in a third stitch okay i hope you can go and see it one two three so it always becomes that it's a third one so don't get um confused over here that we are doing it in the second stitch below first and then in a third one no because that one after you knit it will really be um becomes a third stitch okay so we will knit this stitch first and now we will knit into the third one below and we will knit and purl edges and purl in between and i am purling all the stitches including the increases okay i just wanted to show you and this is my increase over here this is my regular stitch this is my increase all right just purl all the way back okay so we knitted our first increase and basically purled back right right here we purled back and we're ready to do another increase because we increase 
When we are working with raglan sweater, we increase every other row. Let me go and show it to you over here. Okay, just like over here, I've been increasing every other row. Okay, and instead of actually knitting below, I think I was uh, knitting in between the um, stitches. Okay, uh, but what I wanted to go and say is that I will keep it just as simple as this one. I will keep going over here. Okay, so I will make my raglan connect the body. I'll show it to you. And then I will keep going with, uh, with making this into a dress. This is a blouse, but I will just keep going. You know, this uh, blouse has a skirt, matching skirt. So instead of stopping over here, I will just keep going. Now, over here, I worked with color work, right? But since I have only a single color over here, I decided to make a, uh, some type of um, fun pattern there also. But I will go and do it at the bottom of the skirt just to make it simple uh, for you people. And you can go, when I go and do the pattern here on the bottom of the dress, not the skirt, but the dress, the skirt part of the dress, uh, you can either knit, uh, if it, it's going to be very complex for you, you can just uh, knit, you know, all the way to the length, desired length, or you can go and follow me uh, when I'm making uh, the pattern. And that probably is going to be a separate video. And I wanted to talk about this as well. Since I am knitting this, same way like this one where we are going to be buttoning we will button our blouse right uh, over here as well and we will be overlapping four stitches over here in the back later on i will show it to you as well i will show you how i will uh, be um, attaching the body the front to the back Okay, and I will start you also on the sleeves that you can go and decide if you want short sleeve, long sleeve, okay? But right now we are still um, doing the increases. So it's going to be like this, actually, okay? So we are going to be, we still need to increase several times. I'm losing my stitches here. So we still need to increase several times until we reach over here. So every other row I will be increasing, okay? And you can go and do the same. So I will repeat this increase row. So we are increasing by eight stitches, eight stitches each time, all right? And when I have the length, I will go and connect the body. All right, so I'm I'm starting to be very, <laughs> very detailed again, as usual. What else is new, right? But for people who are learning, that's the best. Anyway, so I will show you how I am increasing one more time. It is going to be in english style so we need to knit and purl first four stitches and purl sometimes when i'm doing this uh, because i'm not used to it <laughs> i add stitches <laughs> Okay, wait, 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 wait. We need to go in the back. <laughs> okay, and now I will be knitting. I will be knitting all the way to my stitch right before the marker.
Okay, so here we are. Oops, I almost knitted it, you see? So what we need to do now is we need to knit below that stitch, okay? Below that stitch, and now knit the stitch. Move the marker, knit the stitch, and knit below the stitch, okay? Knit and hold it with your fingers when you're doing it this way. Okay, knit to next stitch that needs to be increased. It, I always knit, uh, le you know, it's less tight. I knit more tight with my regular continental style. This comes usually uh, looser. All right, so now I will again knit below the stitch. If you need to hold it, you can go and do it, okay? And then knit the stitch. Move the marker, knit the stitch, bring it down and knit below the stitch, knit below the stitch. You see how I'm helping myself? Okay, so and continue like that. All right, so basically like I said, knit, increase on the knit side. All right. This is my second row of increasing. So we knitted basically a seven and eight. And then, uh, no, I'm sorry, that was five, six and seven. And then we started increasing in row eight. And this is, and then we uh, purled back in row nine. And this is my 10th row, okay? And then 11th row, I will again purl, except those edges, all right? And then the 12th row, I will go and increase. And so on until I have, uh, let me go and measure until I have three and a half inches. When this measures three and a half inches, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, good morning or wherever you are, maybe afternoon. Uh, so I finished this part yesterday, okay? And I'm ready to go and work on this. Uh, project some more so let me tell you what happened so after I in, uh, increased 12 times in 24 rows again every other row I increased right uh, on this panel and this panel I increased by 12 stitches because I was only adding over here on this side in this panel I was in, uh, increasing on two sides uh, so 24 stitches here, same here, 24 stitches here, and same here, 24 stitches, okay? And as you see also that I weaved in my yarn so I can go and connect front. This is my front, this is my back, so I can connect, connect front to back. So let's go and start connecting it together, the, the back to the front, all right? So now, if you did uh, a buttonhole on this side, then obviously you need to go and crisscross those two back panels this way, right? The, the, the buttonhole has to stay on top. If you did it on this side, then you need to go and crisscross this way. So what we need to do is we need to knit together four stitches, which is this stitch with this stitch, the one next to marker, then this to this one, this to this one, this to this one, 
Let me see how many we have. We have four, yes, four, not five, okay. <laughs> I almost thought I had another one in there. Okay, so, uh, so these four stitches need to be uh, knitted together, okay? So what we need to actually do is uh, we should uh, we should move these stitches in such way so it would be easy for us to knit them together. All right, so I will take first these stitches and move them to another, those four stitches and move them to another. Let me go and do it this way. Let's move them to this needle. So I'm doing it on um, on the wrong side, but we will be turning around. Okay, we don't need that marker anymore because we will be knitting stitches. We will not be knit and purling our edges. Okay, so now let me see. So we need to actually have this stitch first because this one is going to be on top. And when we go and knit two together, this one has to be always like second. Let me explain it to you. Look, look like this. And then we will go and put this one. And when we knit these two stitches together, we're going from this side. So this stitch is going to be on top, okay? Not below. This one is going to be, this one is gonna be below this one. And that's what we want because this part is supposed to be below this part with the buttonhole, okay? So now we need to go and take this stitch and move this stitch. When we knit it together, this stitch is going to be, the second stitch is going to be on the top. Now this one and this one. Again, this stitch is going to be on the top. I'll show it to you shortly. And this stitch and this stitch okay so now we will go and get rid of this marker so we're reshuffling the uh those stitches just to make it easy on us now we have to go and start moving these stitches back onto this needle okay all eight of them because this is where we need to start with this yarn. All right. But you know what? Let me tell you. We need to, let me see, we need to move this yarn in the back. Okay, and we need to knit these stitches. Oh, one more. Hold on, one more. I didn't get that eighth stitch. The one that is supposed to be, the one that is supposed to be below the first one. Okay, so make sure. Okay, so this is, this is where we had our marker. So we need to have eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Don't forget that one stitch that needs to be below this stitch, okay? And this is where we had marker before, right there, okay? Okay, <clears throat> I'm so detailed, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Okay, so now we are going to start knitting these two together. And if it's hard for you to get in there, I usually go like this. I stretch them a little bit and then I go and 
put my needle in and knit. Now, as you see, I am knitting again continental style and you would do it because I wrap yarn with my needle, but English style knitting people wrap the yarn with the hand. We will, you see, look, this first stitch is gonna be below this stitch after we do the knit stitch. Okay, so it will be nicely below and not on top. Exactly how it should be when you are connecting, overlapping two panels okay look see this needs to be below all right so now we are going to continue knitting and i will continue in my continental style so i will knit all the way to the end All right, so here we are. And now we need to add, I will add just one stitch, just one extra stitch. And I do, I will do it this way. Just make crisscross here in the front, not in the back, not like this. Well, although you could go and do it that way too, but I like to do it this way, okay? And now, actually, we need to put half of these stitches, half of these stitches on my next needle because we are going to be knitting in the round. And some of you are probably knitting with uh, circular needles, so you can do the same thing. I mean, you can knit with uh, circular needles. But don't forget to use the magic loop, right? So you would go and have a loop in here when you would be knitting. I think that's about half of it. Okay. And this way I can easily knit in the round. So I added one stitch right here right there and i will continue knitting and i will tighten my stitches in here okay and i will continue knitting entire row which means i will knit all the way to here and then we will add right here another stitch for underarm so we added one stitch over here for underarm and then we will add stitch for underarm over here okay now if you're knitting with double pointed needles what you want to do always tighten this stitch or two of them and next two stitches i always pulled on them that way i do not have that lather that some people get so just you know make sure that you tighten it up and you won't you will not have it i never have lathers when i am knitting on double pointed needles okay here we are i am done with my last one and i will again add one stitch for underarm and then i will continue knitting the back and the back becomes right here this is our back right this okay so let's go and do it and again tighten up these stitches because they definitely will loosen up a little bit okay tighten up these stitches
and then start knitting with regular tension. Okay, and you see how it's getting over here very loose. So we definitely need, we're starting new row and we should mark it that this is our first row, just in case we want to count our rows. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you have a ditzy teacher over here. So I went to get my marker, right? And when I wanted to go and continue, I, I started continue knitting, but I turned my camera off. <laughs> so I have to uh, explain to you what I was doing. So <clears throat> when you get to the point where it is really loose and you don't want lather between these uh, needles, so you really do need to tighten up the, these stitches, right? But also if you have like really loose stitches like I had over here and you can still see it, what I do is when I start knitting my next stitches, not only I make it really tight, but I also pull these stitches, few of them, each time a little bit less, so I tighten up the stitches over here next to it. So I, I get that lather out of there, uh, the, you know, the, the mark when you go up the, up the uh, some people get it when, you know, that they have a like line over here that is called lather. So I always try to avoid that. And these are my tips how to do that. Now I already knitted, uh, I think three rows and I am going to go and make a design over here. I decided, um, I would like to go and weave in a little ribbon that is going to make it prettier and not so plain. I will be soon starting to make my holes. So let me go and see how far I am down here in the back, in the middle of the back. That's our beginning. That's where we have to practically start. So now I have to think how many holes I want and um, I have to do some math over here. So I put my markers in where I want to have holes. And I try to come up with the best solution. So over here, I started basically in the back. Now these four stitches that overlap are my middle. And then I did four stitches to this side and four stitches to this side. So that's 12 stitches. And then I did 12 stitches this way, 12 stitches that way. So I have four holes in the back and then I counted 12 stitches over here, 12 stitches here and the same thing, 12 stitches here, 12 stitches in here. I have four in here also. So that's all, um, uh, all together. It's eight holes and in, in the middle of here, I have 10 stitches. Okay, I've got 10 stitches over here, uh, but that's okay because we're going to be making the, the bow in here and so it's not going to be any problem. We, we could not go and make it any other way because we have 94 stitches altogether. What we really needed, okay, we needed to go and weave in so if if here we would go and have a bow so the end would come out this way would go in 
out and in and out and over here in and out in and out so we need those ends to be out in the front over here okay so i am basically now set up for my holes which are gonna be in each of these markers all right so we will be doing yarn overs but before we do that i'm going to go and purl entire row so here we are coming to the end of the row where i purled every single stitch and we will start making those holes for our um, ribbon okay so we will knit all the way to the marker except the last two stitches here is the marker two stitches we will knit these two stitches together we will do yarn over and we will move the marker we will knit again all the way to the area where there is the two stitches before the marker, which means uh, 10 stitches, right? Okay, I have two stitches before the marker. I will knit them together. Yarn over, move the marker. Let me try to do this in English style. We will knit to the marker, tighten up. <laughs> I'm not very good at this, am I? Almost there. <laughs> tighten up. Two more stitches, almost there. <laughs> it's very painful for me, <laughs> but I have to show it because some people just don't understand how it works. Okay, now knit two stitches together. Yarn over, move the stitch, I mean move the marker. <laughs> I'm confused <laughs> and keep knitting to the next marker all right and then I will show you what we will do next this is our last yarn over and actually we can take we can start taking these off so we will just knit these four stitches, okay, and we will knit entire row. So this was, this is our beginning, right, beginning uh, where we always begin. So now we will knit entire row and we, we can go and take all those markers out. So when you get to your yarn over, you will knit it and you can take your marker out. We will not need it anymore and knit. So we are going to have holes for our ribbon. Again, let's knit all the way to the yarn over knit yarn over and take the marker out all right all the way to the end of the row all right so here i am at the end of the row okay and you can see the holes every 12 stitches okay now 
we will do the same thing what we did over here that we go and purl entire row okay so this is gonna be like our little section for for the ribbon between the purled rows And if you will not have a ribbon, you can go and uh, make a little uh, twisted thread and put it in there as well, not necessarily just the ribbon. So after I'm finished with uh, purling this row, I will knit several rows until I reach desired length before I will start making another pattern, okay? So here I am finished with my purled row, okay? And you can see that I have all these holes for ribbon. And so now what I will do, just keep going straight down until my desired length and then I will go and make another video actually uh, how I do a pattern a lacy pattern at the bottom of the of the dress okay so um, I'm going to go outside and knit in the sun because I've been locked up in here with videotaping and editing and I need some sun so here I am again uh, as you see I weaved in my ribbon just to show you how it is going to look like okay so it's weaved all around the perimeter and here is another ribbon that is in a pink and that would really go beautifully as well and i'm thinking about changing it into this pink ribbon all right so what do you think white or pink <laughs> now i already finished one of the sleeves all right and i will show you today how i will go and finish this sleeve how you know i will start you up and then all you have to do is knit uh ribbing knit and pearl and i did uh six rows over here instead of five here i have five rows here i have six rows and then i just just bind it off and the stitches okay one more thing that i am finished with my le kind of finished with the length but i told you i will add a a pattern here at the bottom Okay, so that is going to be in a different video. But let me go and show you how I will go and finish the sleeve. First, actually, I want to move all the stitches from the yarn onto my little tiny needles. Okay, so we will just put our needle into the stitches. Okay, so I put hopefully all my stitches on my needles and we will just try to pull the yarn. Let's go and do it like this. Now, we are going to go and find the middle, that one stitch that we added when we were attaching uh, front to the back, okay? And that's this stitch right here. So this is where we will start. And then we have pretty big gap over here, so I will put two stitches here. 
Okay, so I will start here, add, cast on, one, two, three stitches, knit 29 stitches, and then cast on two more stitches. So you will basically, if you will do the same, you will end up with 34 stitches, okay? So let's go and do that. So we will cast on first stitch right in the middle. Now we will cast on second stitch and cast it on in such way that you don't have holes, okay? If you do it here, you're gonna have holes. So I usually go somewhere in, in there. Now we will go and cast on another one and I will go right here. Okay, can you see what we're doing over here? Okay. Um, you can either knit with both uh, strands and you can, or you can go and keep wrapping it around a little bit. And that wrapping is going to go and help you out a little bit. Okay, now I will knit 29 stitches. Okay. When you knit 29 stitches, you need to cast on two more stitches. I don't want to do it here. Look, it would go and create a big hole. So I'll go right here. And one more right here. And let's go and put these two stitches on our last needle. Okay. Now we just will start doing our ribbing. Knit and purl. knit and purl. Of course, I'm tightening up my first two stitches because I don't want any spaces, I don't want any ladders between my DPNs. So knit and purl your stitches all the way to the end of the row and then repeat that five more times so here i am finishing up my sixth row of ribbing and now we will start binding off okay so I just knitted in around six rows of ribbing, knit and purl. And now we will bind off. So I knitted first stitch, purled second, and I will pull that stitch over the last knitted stitch. Knit and pull over the last knitted stitch. And now we have pearl stitch. Okay, so I will just bind off. Should I try in uh, English style? <laughs> Maybe I should, huh? And 
pull that stitch over the last knitted stitch. Now we need to purl. Purl this stitch. Bring the yarn back. See, I am very, my stitches are very loose. Okay, so that's how you do it in English style. <laughs> that's how you hold needles when, or, or better than me. <laughs> All right, so let me go and finish binding off. And, and then I will go and say goodbye. All right, so here we are with the last stitch. Let's go make a knot. Later on, we will go and uh, weave it in. All right. So we're finished with the sleeves. And let me go and finish talking to you about the dress. So you do. Oh, look, I already have a button there, too. You see how cute. Look at that. Just need to block it a little bit. This is supposed to go over each other, which is doing perfect. Okay. And we have the ribbon. Okay. And so this is what I want to say. So you have a choice. Okay. You can either just finish knitting the length of the dress and then finish it with ribbing and then you will be finished and then of course weave in all the uh, ends or watch my other video how I'm finishing this dress with a uh, lacy pattern. I was coming up with some ideas over here Oh, this is something else, not this one, but this one. Let me go and fold it. This is my other project for um, later on. I'm, I am already working on another project. <laughs> I am. I get crazy over here with all the ideas. Anyway, so I kind of created a pattern over here. I'm not sure how I'm going to finish this. But this would be knitted going down like this and then finished with not with the ribbing because it would go and shrink the bottom uh, kind of closer together. But I will just do knit and purl rows. One uh, row purl, one knit row. And I'm not really sure how many of them I want to have. After I finish this pattern, and this pattern is 10 uh, rows, so another 10 rows, which would be about up to here. So if it's like up to here, let me go and grab the doll. Okay, so another about this much would reach a little bit above her knees. But uh, again, you can go and determine your own preparation. If you want a really long, 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 long dress, you could knit really quite down or even repeat. Uh, if, if you will want to do the lacy pattern in here, you could also repeat several panels of the uh, lacy pattern as well. You know, um, you can go and uh, adjust it to your um style to your ideas all right and besides that you can go and see below my video check for links uh link to the blog and the written pattern don't forget to like my video i love when you like my videos you can comment anytime don't forget to share it with your friends and family. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel and follow me on social media. And you will see me another day.